Hi there, today in lesson eight, we are working on rotation patterns. The goal of today's lesson is to recognize and be able to interpret the meaning of rotations of 90 degrees, 180 degrees, and 270 degrees around a single point. Today, what we're gonna to do to get it to start is we're gonna look at this isosceles triangle. Here is a right isosceles triangle. Keep in mind that when that's posted like that, that means that we have a right angle right there. And we can use that right angle to help us uh, guide us as we go throughout our lesson. The way that we can help us guide or help guide us is because is because this is a 90 degree angle and all of our rotations are multiples of 90 degrees. That's going to help us a lot. I'm going to use my patty paper here to show you how that will help. Just tracing the triangle to get started. What we're looking at is we're going to take each of these three points and we're going to go ahead and rotate our triangle around center B clockwise first case 90 degrees since this is 90 degrees what it helps what this will help us with is an understanding that every time that I rotate from this edge right here to this edge right here that's a 90 degree rotation so when I look at segment CB and it maps to the second side of this triangle I know that when I rotate around that center and I get to right here, this is a 90 degree rotation because segment CB has changed from a vertical to a horizontal. I can go ahead and mark, I'm going to put this A, I see it's right there in the middle of that R. I'm going to put that right there and I know that that's going to be A prime. I'll go ahead and draw my triangle. And we see that's our first A prime, or actually what we're, we, they didn't give us any directions to relabel a different way, but you can see the idea. So now we have another triangle. And the cool thing about this is when I go ahead and rotate, I can see that not only do I get 90 degrees here, but when I get around to this line again, I see that I'm actually rotating 90 degrees twice or 180 degrees. That's really helpful for us because now we see that this angle that's been created by segment CB and then the image of segment AB is that this is a 180 degree angle or what we call a straight angle. Straight angles always equal 180 degrees or we see a straight angle we, we can recognize that as also a straight line. So let's go ahead and do the third rotation or this next rotation rotating 180 degrees. Keep in mind that every time I take CB to map the next side that's 90 degrees. So here's our first one, 90 degrees, followed by another rotation, 180 degrees. And then we have some new important things to notice here. Even though it goes off the page a little bit, we're still going to be okay. I'll just try and draw this in the, the best spot that I can get it. And one way that I'm going to help myself with that, I'm going to mark this spot. But then the other one I noticed is that it falls right in line with this line right here. So I can go ahead and connect there. Connect here, and I have another triangle that's been created. What I should notice right here is this point right here in the rotation, this side over here, let's call this one side D. And we notice that side D has been rotated here where we get our D prime, 90 degrees, and we see that these, this angle or this line now is perpendicular to it, 90 degrees. But then we see once we get around to the whole, that 180 degree rotation, the related side is now 180 degrees away from it, and it's parallel to the original segment. That's something that's going to come into play here in a little bit for us. Here's the last thing we recognize. We do this rotation a third time for 270 degrees, and what we see is that that's a rotation of three 90 degree angles, or three 90 degree rotations. So we go back to our spot, keep in mind, pay attention to segment CB. Every time it hits the line, I'm going to switch hands here. Every time it hits the next line is 90 degrees. So there's 90 degrees, another 90 degrees for 180 degrees. And finally, one more set of 90 degrees. And we see that we end up making not quite a full circle because remember, we're just we're just paying attention to this piece, but a 270 degree rotation looks an awful lot like a 90 degree counterclockwise rotation. 
So keep those pieces in mind as we as we learn that and as we go through those. Um, it says, what will you look like, or what will it look like when you have the four triangles rotated 90 degrees clockwise around B, 180 degrees, uh, and and so on and so forth. What it will look like here is we look like we're continuously building this figure into a square, and then we see four triangles that are all met together at a common vertex to make a square, and we know it's a square because of our rules of, of rigid transformation that each of these segments that are related remain the same length. So there's a good start for us to recognize what's going on with our rotations. Keep that in mind. I think the biggest thing that we need to pay attention to is, is this notion or the, the recognition or the understanding that all of the segment lengths have to stay the exact same as we do our rotations. On to the next problem. There's an interactive piece to this. If you'd like to go and get onto this website, pause your video, open a new tab, and type that in there. Or you can look in the description. There's a link to it. And as we as we play with this, what we see is we can actually move these inter these pieces interactively. I'm going to go ahead and do these with patty paper. I'm going to continue to use my other piece. But what we're working with now is instead of rotating a figure like a triangle, we're going to rotate a shape that's just a segment. Remember, a segment is a piece of a line, not an entire line. But there's some rules that we need to recognize as we do this. First off, we're going to rotate segment CD 180 degrees around point D. Draw its image and label the image of C as A. So here we go with our line segment. We have point C and D. And then we're going to rotate... 180 degrees around center D. So I guess the question comes down to it then, how is it that we know when I've rotated 180 degree, 80 degrees? Well, if we remember when we talked on this side, we recognized that the rotation of 180 degrees created a straight angle. So these, these two segments actually continued and made a straight line. When I go ahead and make my rotation here, what I should catch with that with a straight angle as I go about this clockwise or counterclockwise does not matter for 180 degrees but I do know that I see right here is a 90 degree angle and then I keep going and then I keep go until I recognize that my line continues on straight following the same pattern a good way to check to see if I'm following the same pattern is to go from C to D checking rise and run this is a rise of two and run a four so my ratio is two fourths and then I want to double check that the ratio that I've created here with my movement is also two fourths so I see up two units to the right four units and I see equal ratios meaning that I do have a straight line so I'm going to hover right over here over point C but I have to remember that I'm going to label this one as point A as per the instructions and I can go ahead and continue make my segment here from D to A and I see that 180 degree rotation based on this straight line for, uh, for my next rotation I'm going to actually rotate segment CD come back to this again and I'm going to rotate around that segment 180 degrees around point E so now we're just changing our center of rotation but we're doing the same type of motion but here's what I'd like for you to do. I'd like for you to pause the video, take a moment, make a prediction for where that's at, rotate your own work, and see what you come up with. Welcome back to the video. We're going to go ahead and rotate this 180 degrees. First off, I'm going to start rotating. Again, it doesn't matter for 180 degrees. Uh, which direction I go? I believe that right there is pretty well perpendicular, 90 degrees. I'm going to keep coming around until I get to what I believe is 180 degrees. But then I have to ask that question, how do I know exactly where 180 degrees is? Well, if you recall what we talked about a moment ago about checking the ratio of change, how we rise a certain amount and run a certain amount, or go up and to the right, we can check that ratio to ensure that we have the same ratio as the others because it's a 180 degree rotation. I see that my ratio is rise up to one, two, three, four in those positions. So I'm going to go ahead and hover my pencil right here, make a mark, check for D where it was, line up E again and C, and then D comes right here. 
And then this one says, draw the image and label the image as of CB as the image, or the, excuse me, the image of C is supposed to be B. So we'll go ahead and label this one as B. And then it says the image of D is F. Here we go. All right. The last move that we have here is a rotation of 180 degrees around center G, or what we call a midpoint. So we have a new word here, or it may be, may be fairly new to you. We're going to go ahead and mark that, make a quick note to understand what is midpoint. Well, midpoint is the center. Actually, we're going to call this a point in the center of a line or segment. So midpoint is that, that word that we use to define the middle point of any line or segment. So before we make that rotation up here, we're going to go ahead and mark or line this back up. We'll mark point G or mark our midpoint. And then at that midpoint, we're going to go ahead and do our rotation of 180 degrees. So as we move our way around, we see this is perpendicular, 90 degrees. Continue around another 90 degrees until the line snaps back to itself. And we see that that line is actually still within the line. It, it didn't go anywhere. We just see that C and D basically just switched places. This is an important piece for us to answer. So it says, what happens when you rotate a segment 180 degrees around a point? Well, we should see that there's two major consequences that happen here. The first thing that we see is, one, if rotating around a center on the, say, or on the figure, The lines or the line segment overlap, or we have a new word, coincide. Coincide is, is the word that describes an overlap of two or more segments where it actually looks like just one line, but we know that this was two different segments that we drew. The other option with this is if we rotate around a center not on the figure. The consequence of this is going to be the image is parallel to the original segment. Parallel lines is one of the major indicators of 180 degree rotations. If you do not end up with lines that contain the segments that are not and they're not parallel, then we messed up on the rotation of 180 degrees. So keep that in mind. That's why we why I talked about this ratio right here. Recognizing the ratio must be equal. If the ratios are equal, then as we're going to learn here in a few lessons, the slope is equal. And when the slope is equal, the lines are parallel, which means that we have a 180 degree rotation can actually describe that. Now, what happens if I'm just given a set of parallel lines or parallel segments? Or maybe I assume that they're parallel. Let's check that first and see, is it possible to rotate one line segment to the other? Well, it's only going to be possible if there's a 180 degree rotation. But then the question is, where's that center? So when we look at this, I'm going to mark this point here, this point here, this point here, and this point here. We're going to say that, that the rotation along this point we, we know that there has to be a central point to this, but how can I find it? Well, one of the major things that we can look at is remember that we have that midpoint. Midpoint comes into this again, where we see that the distance between any two points has to be, or the middle of those two points 
is, is going to be a very important piece to this. So I'm going to take these points. Let's actually, I'm going to go like this. I'm going to call this one A, this one B, this one B prime, this one A prime. So now we know which points are related and which ones are, are corresponding. If I look at these corresponding points and I just take a segment between the two here, and then I take a link and link up these two corresponding segment or these two corresponding points, what I get is actually an intersection. And that intersection between these points being right here is actually the center of rotation. We're going to call this one point C is the center of rotation for this 180 degree rotation. I just want to verify one last thing to make for sure that these two segments are parallel. I'm going to look at the ratio here. There's one, two, three. Oh my goodness, my lights went out. Sorry. One, two, three, four, five. Up and then to the right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I have a ratio of five eighths for segment AB. And then segment A prime B prime, I have one, two, three, four, five up and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight for five eighths. I see that the ratios are exactly equal. So I know for a fact now that the lines containing these two segments are parallel. I know for a fact that point C is the center of rotation. And now I can answer the question, is it possible to rotate one line segment to the other here? Yes. And if so, find the center of such a rotation. If not explain, we found the center of rotation by looking at corresponding points and looking for the intersection of those points. Yes, and we're going to say a rotation of 180 degrees around center C. And if we want to get more fancy with this, we would say maps segment AB to segment A prime B prime. When we say map, we mean it matches or it snaps to it, it overlaps it, it coincides with it exactly. There's the bulk of the lesson today. Oops, just kidding. There was one more thing. <laughs> we have to talk about one more set of patterns. And as we look at this set of patterns, we have one more piece. We're actually going to tie together a few of the pieces that we've done from this lesson with talking about rotation and recognizing congruence, but we're also going to talk about other pieces from previous lessons. So what our goal is right here is you can use rigid transformation of a figure to make patterns such as this one right up here. This diagram is built with three different transformations of triangle ABC. Describe a rigid transformation that takes triangle ABC to triangle CDE, and then a rigid transformation that takes again ABC to EFG, and then ABC to GHA. And then we have to ask the question, do the segments AC, CE, EG, and GA, do they all have the same length? And explain your reasoning. So let's take a look first off. Let's just verify quickly that this figure right here, triangle ABC, really is the same size as all these other triangles. I mean, I know they said that they get that these that it was made by a transformation, but to verify it just means that I'm going to see, yes, these are really the same size. They're really the same shape because if they're not, there's no there's no rigid transformation that could make that happen. So now that I know they're the same, now I need to do something. Describe a transformation that takes this triangle to this triangle. I have a couple of options. The first one I think of is translate to the right. So translate B to, to or point B to point D. And then I'm going to go ahead and rotate 90 degrees clockwise around point D to match that spot. So that's that's one possible way. So we see this translate triangle ABC from B to D and then rotate triangle ABC 90 degrees, what was it? It was clockwise around D, center D. Ooh, sorry, that kind of got a long ways across and got a little washed out here. I'll use a different color when I write the next one. Okay, there's that one. Now we go back to ABC. 
and we figure, well, if this was a 90 degree rotation, that's one way. Perhaps you said, you know what, Mr. Quilter, I actually saw something different or I thought something different. I want to go ahead and rotate figure ABC 90 degrees first clockwise, and then I'm going to translate, and that's totally fine. Perhaps on this next one you're saying, you know, I just want to, I just want to translate all the way across from B to F. And then I'm going to rotate and I see, oh, wait a minute, that looks like a 180 degree rotation. So I'm going to rotate 180 degrees. Or maybe you want to change the order and you say, well, that one just looks opposite to that one. So I'm going to go ahead and rotate this one 180 degrees and then translate. That's perfectly acceptable. Or maybe you say, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and translate to D, then I'm going to translate from D to F, and then I'm going to rotate 180. There's a lot of different ways to do this. Just make sure that when you write it out, you use great vocabulary. Tell me what the motion is, what shape you're moving, how you're moving it, right? Again, rotation. Tell me what you're doing, what's moving, how you're moving it. We have to include each of those pieces. So the next one, we, we would see that that becomes a rotation of 180 degrees. And then this one over here, perhaps we just change it up and we translate down from B to H and then we rotate counterclockwise 90 degrees. It's okay to change it and there's a lot of different ways to do this. There's one way that I'm not going to tell you about. I would love for you to leave me a comment. Go ahead and post that comment on the Google Classroom feed where this assignment is listed. And let me know what's another way that you saw that I did not list. That would be awesome to see what your ideas are. I'm looking for this to happen actually with, with one rigid motion. So can I describe this transformation that takes A, B, C to C, D, E in one shot? Can I use one move to get A, B, C to E, F, G? But be very specific when you do this. So here's the deal that happened though. As I verified all of these under the rules of basic rigid or of rigid transformations, we found out that this side right here, we're going to call this side X, is the exact same length of each of these. So then our question, since it's rotating, I know that translate or that rotations and translations and reflections never change the size of an image or the size of a figure. I know that rigid motion works. So these three segments, do they have the same length? Yes, they absolutely do rigid transformations preserve and then you're probably thinking hey quilter that's a new word so we're going to talk about that one this word right here this one means to keep the same that's what preserve means so rigid transformations preserve lengths of segments. I guess it would just be length of segment because lengths segments only have one length. And there you go. That will be one of the most important definitions that you can learn is that rigid transformations preserve length of segments, angle measures, um, how a line looks, how a ray looks, all the relationships between. To recap, let's look at our lesson here, our lesson summary, and let's mark some text here. When we apply a 180 degree rotation to a line segment, there's several possible outcomes. First off, if the segment, the segment could just map to itself or it could copy to itself would be a good way to describe that, or it could match to itself, but only if this if the center of rotation is the midpoint, right? So when the center of rotation is the midpoint, then we're talking about the segment maps to itself. When we have the center of rotation is a point on the segment, we see that the segment overlaps with the segment and lies on the same line. And we talked about overlaps. Our new word for that is coincide, right? And then finally, right here, the last one, it says the image of the segment does not overlap. Okay, so image of the segment does not overlap, right? When the center of rotation is not on the segment, we understand now that we actually see parallel relationships.
So that's the keyword we want to think about there. Just like we worked on with the other ones, if you build patterns by rotating shapes to make a square, we can do the same thing by using different degrees, in this case to get a hexagon, and this will look just like the isometric grids that we've been using. In this hexagon, each of these triangles are already um, the same angles, the same measures, the same lengths of segments, everything. These are equilateral triangles. means that if I rotate here 60 degrees, a rotation through two of them is 120 degrees. A rotation through three of them, again, that straight line is 180 degrees, and so on, as you can see up here. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to email me. I'd be happy to answer those questions for you. I hope this is a helpful lesson for you. Make sure that you never give up because you can do math. I know you can. Thanks for stopping by.